sound. People say a man is made out of mud. Hello and welcome to our podcast that we are calling Market Failure. We talk a lot about how the free market is an ideal scenario, but sometimes that free market doesn't exactly work for all people. And so we would call that market failure. So let's go ahead and see what we're talking about in a little bit more detail. So in the theoretical free market, there are going to be winners and losers. Those competitors who are competitive and who do well by whatever their standards are, they're considered winners. But there are certainly those who can't compete at the same level for whatever reason. They end up being not competitive, their profit motive is not fulfilled, and they end up struggling in a free market scenario. They would be considered losers in the free market scenario. Unfortunately, the free market does not provide any support for those who cannot be competitive for some reason or another. It's a pretty harsh every man for himself scenario in terms of what that free market is. And so when losers are kind of spit out of that, where do they go? What do they do? Unfortunately, the free market, since it is so based on competition, does not account for those who cannot compete. And the question would become, why? Why would the free market be so harsh? Why would they not take care of people in the free market scenario? Well, if profit motive is what drives the free market, meaning what can I make for myself, then there's probably not any profit to be made in helping others. Because if I choose to help others, whether that be financially or through other services, I'm not getting anything out of that. It's just me giving away my money to help somebody else. And since the profit motive is driving the market, what can I get for myself? Why would I ever want to give it away in a theoretical free market? And so as we're going to see, since we are in a mixed economy here in the United States, meaning that we have many elements of the free market, but we also have elements of a command system where the government can step in and provide some direction and support, we are in a mixed market. And so in a theoretical free and pure market, there would be no supports for people who can't compete. You can't compete. Too bad for you, you're out of luck. But since we are in a mixed market where the government does have some influence on our market, this is where these supports come from. And this is market failure, meaning that the free market cannot do everything. It does have limits. And so who's going to step in and help shore up where those limits are? That's going to be the government and some other entities that we'll talk about. So one of the concepts we need to understand is the idea of a safety net. And this is a generic term for some sort of program that helps people when they are struggling. Because again, in a free market scenario, it's all based on competition. If you're doing well and you're winning, you don't need any help because you're winning. But if for some reason you can't compete, whether that's because of age, disability, intellectual capacity, bad luck, then you are considered a non-winner or a loser in the free market scenario. And so, because we are in a mixed system where there is government influence in our market, there is the concept of safety nets. Just the idea of, we don't want everyone to be spit out the back of the market and hit rock bottom. How can we help people safely navigate when they are not as competitive as the free market wants them to be? So some generic examples, a homeless shelter, a food bank, a soup kitchen, an energy assistant program. These may be run by the government directly. They may be run by private groups or charities or churches. But these are generic examples of safety nets. That if somebody has become not competitive in the market for whatever reason and they find themselves homeless, the free market would say, tough to be you. I guess you'll be living on the streets. But we as a society tend to look at that and say, maybe that's not the most ideal for our situation. And since we have a mixed system, there are safety nets in place to help those people who have become homeless or who have found themselves without enough food, or perhaps even in the winter months have found themselves without the ability to pay their heating bills to a reasonable level. So the first group of safety net programs is the idea of entitlement programs. And the word entitled means that you are expecting membership in these programs. It is your right to have these programs. And the reason that these are entitlement programs is because if you were a worker at some point, meaning you were working for a company legally and you were being paid, while you were working, you and your employer were paying into this system through the taxes that you have paid. Therefore, since you have paid into them, 
you are entitled to receive these benefits should you ever need them. So one example is unemployment insurance. So when you are working for someone and you are being paid, your employer pays a certain percentage of your wages to the government. The money is pooled in a large fund. And if for some reason you find yourself not being competitive and that you have been fired or laid off, and so you are technically losing in the market system, you are entitled to receive some amount of money from the state or federal government while you are looking for a new job. This is not the government just giving you money for the heck of it. This is money that you have paid into a big pool, and now you are saying, I need it, and they are able to pay you some of that back. Now, there are limits for this, and it seems like every couple of years those limits change, meaning that once you have been fired, you're not going to be paid unemployment insurance forever and that you can just sit around and do nothing. But it will give you a certain amount of money for a certain amount of time in order to help you get back onto your feet, to help you become re-competitive in the market, and then move forward with paying back into the system of the entitlement program. Another example of a safety net that is an entitlement program is that of Social Security. This came about in the 1930s when the Great Depression hit. And basically what happens is, as you are employed, your employer and you pay a small percentage of your check into the Social Security Fund. And then when you retire, some of that money comes back to you because you have paid into this while you're working. Now you are retired and so you are not making any money from a job, but you still need money to live. So Social Security pays a monthly amount to people who have paid into the system. And again, this is an entitlement program because you as a worker have been paying into the system while working. It's a way to help keep an eye on our older folks in our community. Because at that point, if they're 65 or 68 or whatever the retirement age is, they're probably not competitive in the free market system. They're too old, they're too tired, they're too slow, they're too not nimble. They can't be as competitive. And in a pure free market system, we'd say, sucks to be you, sucks to be old, here's an ice flow, good luck to you. But we don't do that. We have safety nets in place, and we seek to take care of those who have become non-competitive in the market. And another example here is Social Security. Another example of an entitlement program is Medicare. And this is where employers and workers pay a small percentage of their paycheck into a large fund. And then when you retire, you can receive free or reduced health care. So Social Security just kind of pays you to retire. It's like your monthly income and just in terms of being there. But if you need medical attention, then you would apply to the program of Medicare, which is going to be at a greatly reduced rate than a 35-year-old would have to pay for that same service. Because a 35-year-old is still working, so they're making a bigger income, they can pay more. But again, the safety net is in place for our senior citizens because when they retire, they're technically not competitive in the free market, yet we still want to take care of them through safety net programs. So in this case, Medicare comes in in order to help people provide themselves with health care that they need, even when they have a very small or limited income due to retirement. So another branch of safety net programs are the programs that are not entitlement programs, meaning that whether or not you have worked, we do as a government provide these for our people. So the first three were entitlement programs, meaning that people have paid into this pool, and then if they ever need it, they can take out from this pool. The next chunk of safety nets that we're going to look at are things that people have not paid into, yet our government still provides for them. And so one example is Medicaid, and this is basic health insurance for people with very low incomes. So people at or near the poverty level. And so how do we fund this massive pool of money that could eventually just basically be given to people who are exceptionally poor? Well, this is what we pay for with our state and federal taxes. As people who are working are capable of paying money that goes into the pool of Medicaid, the federal government takes that, takes a certain percentage of all the money they collect, and sets it aside for Medicaid for the people who are exceptionally poor. Imagine they're a child of a very poor family. There's no way that that kid has been able to prove themselves as a worker yet or to be able to pay into any system, but they probably need health care. Our society has decided that we will take care of these people to a certain level through the program of Medicaid. So this is also the idea of welfare. 
Welfare is a very general term for programs that help the poor. And so they are not entitlement programs, meaning these people haven't paid into a pool and they're just basically getting out their own money. These are programs where the government collects money from all working Americans and sets it aside for people who need a little bit more help at certain times. So for example, TANF, T-A-N-F, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. It's another safety net for people who are exceptionally poor, can't get on their feet, have fallen behind, have become non-competitive for some reason. The government can come in and give them financial, social support. Another example of a safety net, but one that is not an entitlement program, is the idea of food stamps. And this is where poor and needy families would be given stamps or a credit card type thing to basically buy food for their family. Another concept we have to look at in terms of where a free market fails is the idea of a negative externality. And so to review what that definition is, this is when the decision made by one party negatively affects someone who isn't making that decision. And so in a free market system, the profit motive rules. If I am owning a factory, I want to do whatever I can to make the most profit possible. And so perhaps as I have my chemical factory that I'm going to be able to then sell to farmers as fertilizer or whatever, if my factory is polluting, that is a negative externality. I am making a choice to run my factory, but the fact that it is polluting the environment is hurting somebody else. But in a free market, as an economic choice maker, I don't care about pollution because... If I were to care about pollution and were to work to minimize my pollution, that would take profit away from me. Therefore, in a pure free market system, I do whatever I can to make the most money for me, and I'm not going to care what happens to other people. So other examples, product defects that cause illness or choking or death. Hey, if you bought my toy for your child, I get the money. Yay me. And if that toy happens to break apart and it kills your child, that's not my responsibility in a pure free market system because I've made my profit. Another example, fracking. If I'm a fracking company and I'm looking to use hydraulic fracturing in order to get the oil and natural gas out of some shale, I'm making that money. Once I get it out, it's good for me. I've made my profit. Now, if that happens to contaminate the groundwater around me or perhaps even cause small earthquakes, I don't really care because in a pure free market system, I have gotten mine, I have gotten my profit. And so that sounds really harsh. Why would the free market not care about all these negative externalities? Well, again, go back to the beginning. If profit motive is what drives the market, is there less profit available to me as a factory owner if I have to pay for something to minimize my pollution? Is there less profit for me as a toy maker if I have to print a safety label on the side or if I have to go back and better affix the arms on my little action figures so somebody doesn't choke? Of course there is because now these all become more costs for me as a company, which means less profit for me. And so if profit drives the free market, there's no profit offered by gaining support. There's less profit for me as a company owner if I have to do all these other things just to decrease my negative externalities. And so oftentimes companies will find that it is way cheaper for them not to deal with their problem rather than to clean up their messes. Sometimes it's a lot cheaper for them to pay out a settlement in a lawsuit to the family whose kid choked on the little piece than it is to retool their factories and make their stuff safer. Sometimes it's cheaper for companies to settle pollution lawsuits than to retrofit their factories with scrubbers on their smokestacks. It's really sad, but that's kind of how it works, that there is no profit for these companies in order to offer support. And so in a pure free market scenario, they're looking out for themselves. If they would make less money by protecting outside interests, like the pollution or the arm falling off the action figure, they're not going to do it. And so in a fear-free market, a company can basically do whatever they need to do to make profit. If they create negative externalities, it's not their problem. They don't care because they are making their own profit, and so that's what drives the free market. But since the United States is not a true, pure free market, and we do have some command elements, we do have some times where the government will get involved in the economy, we have something like government regulation. This is where the federal or state government will come to a company and say, hey, 
We understand you have the ability to make profit and that's good and all, but you are creating too many negative externalities. And we, the government, say you need to stop that or you need to fix that or else. And the or else could come in the form of sanctions or fines. So basically, hey, company that's polluting the environment, you can either put scrubbers on your smokestacks that will cost you X amount of dollars, or we're going to fine you for every part of pollution that enters into the atmosphere due to your factory. And so the point of this is to shift the cost back to the producers. So rather than having the scenario where the factory owner makes all kinds of pollution, yet they are not responsible for cleaning it up, the government is stepping in saying, you need to be responsible for that. You need to absorb that cost and you need to clean up your negative external messes. And so one example of government regulation that we have is the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA. These guys are in charge of regulating food safety and pharmaceutical safety and effectiveness. So basically they try to keep an eye on our food supply and our drug supply to make sure that it's not going to kill us. And so not only do we have the FDA, but we have tons of other regulatory agencies in the federal government. The Environmental Protection Agency or the EPA keeps an eye on environmental impacts of different factories or institutions. The Consumer Product Safety Commission their goal is to make sure that your action figure's arm doesn't break off under normal circumstances and harm a child. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission. We want to make sure that our nuclear power plants don't just melt down. And then the Securities and Exchange Commission keeps an eye on the stock market. You're more than welcome to make trades, to get into the stock market, but there are limits. If you are trading illegally, if you are stealing money, then the SEC is going to come in there and say, you can't do that. That is inappropriate. And all of these come about because the free market has failed. Because the free market is about getting profit for yourself and for your own business. And once there's any amount of cost to that profit, the free market is not going to take care of it. So here, the free market concept has failed. And there are limits to that. And so some other group needs to come in and either provide safety nets like we talked about in the first half or regulatory agencies like we've talked about in the second half in order to make society better and safer for all people involved, not just for the people making profit. So that's about it in terms of our first look at market failure. While the pure free market has some great things to it, and we in the United States like a lot of the benefits that it gives us in terms of diversity, quick response to product need, the idea of making profit, there are limits to this concept. When somebody becomes not competitive for whatever reason, the free market would say sucks to be you, you're on your own. But our society does not exactly believe that. Hence, the mixed system where the government does play a role. And so in two important examples, we have the safety net programs, which include the entitlement programs and those where we're just giving away support to those who truly need it, but also regulatory agencies where the government serves to keep an eye on these profit-making industries because they're not going to keep an eye on themselves because there's no profit in it. So that's about it. If you have any questions, please bring those in the class. We'll get those all shored up for you. Otherwise, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon.